Welcome back to Task and Purpose. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. Imagine if you could keep your weapon small and lightweight, while at the same time having a longer barrel length and better muzzle velocity. This is the promise of the Ukrainian-made bullpup rifle. The Ukrainian military has been forced to use an odd assortment of different firearms after the Russian invasion. A lot of it old Soviet equipment, right? But there's a homegrown remedy slowly but surely getting into the hands of Ukrainian soldiers. The Maliuk is a Ukrainian-made bullpup rifle that has a wild, futuristic look. The Maliuk's development story perfectly tracks the history of Ukraine's small arms industry and how it turned itself around from a state of disrepair after the fall of the Soviet Union. The creators even say that its recoil is reduced by 50% compared to the AK. This rifle is used by Ukraine's most elite special forces, as well as its most controversial Azov battalion. So are the claims about the mysterious weapons accurate? What's the best way to use the Maliuk bullpup in combat? And why did the Ukrainian military industrial complex originally create it? The origin of the system comes from a Ukrainian program in the mid-1990s. Megaprojects.net George Kulov wrote a great article outlining the lackluster conditions that Ukraine's small arms manufacturing was in following the collapse of the Soviet Union. You see, Ukraine was responsible for 30% of all defense production and 40% of all research and development for the Soviet Union at the time. But it was mostly focused on building intercontinental ballistic missiles, tanks, and aircraft carriers, not small arms. Russia had the large Tola arms plant, famous for creating millions of rifles and ammo each year. The newly independent Ukraine in the early 1990s had inherited bits and pieces of small arms industries. They only had small fragments of a complete manufacturing apparatus, though. Ukraine would now have to successfully coordinate between the 15 different federalized republics where the now privatized small arms plants were located. However, in 1996, many of these Ukrainian privatized weapons companies were once again brought under state control. When they formed the Uruk Export, which was a major part of Ukraine's military industrial complex. In the early 2000s, Ukraine turned to its conglomerate for an answer to modernizing their old Soviet AK stockpile. Thus began their first step towards the Maliuk. The first major Ukrainian small arms program was called Vepr. A few prototypes were built from existing Soviet era rifles like the RPK, the AKM, the AK-74, and even the SKS. The Ukrainian government was attempting to refresh their line of leftover Soviet AK rifles that were in inventory using old parts combined with new popular looks like polymer cased rifles. The team that was designing these rifles filed for a patent, but by 2001, the Ukrainian government ordered the team to hand over all documentation to the Kiev radio plant. The Kiev radio plant is an industrial plant that emerged out of the electromechanical railway shops in the Soviet Union after World War II. And they switched over from producing industrial products to building weapons for the military industrial complex in the 1990s. Ukraine did eventually announce they were purchasing thousands of Vepers, but the program floundered and by 2014, zero Vepers had been delivered. The official development for the Maliuk began in 2005 by the Inner Pro Invest IPI using the resources of the Karaslev assembly manufacturing plant, which had previously manufactured tankers, trucks, tractor loaders, and boilers, with a staff of about 50 people working there. This obscure 2015 article of the Ukrainian Defense Review has an interview with the vice CEO, Sergei Lohovsky, who's responsible for creating this rifle. In it, he claims that the Maliuk has its recoil reduced by 50% compared to the AK, a claim we will further investigate in just a minute. Sergei goes on to explain that the Maliuk was originally created as a private venture when the Ukrainian Secret Service, SBU, requested it. In 2008, the Ukrainian elite SBU got their hands on low-rate production models, and they had an overall positive opinion of it, leading to the Ukrainian Defense Forces to continue funding R&D for the project, so they kept researching and looking into it. Maliuk is a Russian and Ukrainian word which directly translates to baby boy, which was coincidentally also my squad's nickname for me in Iraq. It was only meant to be a temporary name for the prototype weapon, but the name ended up sticking. You'll see it's often referred to as the Vulcan. It's designed and marketed by a private Ukrainian company, a somewhat mysterious company called IPI, Interpro Invest, located in Kiev. They've been around since 1998, and they've grown into somewhat of a big player in the Ukrainian military industrial complex. Interpro Invest creates not just small arms, but fire control systems for tanks and radar systems that detect and locate enemy drones. 
So the Mali Oak is easily their biggest claim to fame at IPI. It's become synonymous with national pride, sometimes too much national pride, but the Mali Oak is essentially a bullpup conversion of the AK-74 rifle. Early models of the Maliuk were actually AK-74 receivers modified into the bullpup configuration. The Maliuk was first shown in 2015, very recently, at an expo in Kiev, where it gained a lot of attention and by 2016, 200 units had been issued to the Ukrainian military. According to the March 25th post of the armamentsresearch.com, written by Mike F., shortly after the invasion began, the Ukrainian military captured some Russian military equipment on the front lines in Odessa. The Russian saboteurs were using the Maliuk to pretend to be Ukrainian soldiers. Evidence for this is from the fact that the Maliuk has never been exported to Russia, so it's unclear how they got their hands on it in the first place. One possible explanation that comes to the top of my mind though is, so I've spoken to a Serbian who's fighting for the Russian side in this war, and he says that Ukrainian soldiers often sell them weapons and equipment and vice versa, so take that with a grain of salt, but it's possible that Ukrainians sold this weapon to Russians. George Kulov of megaprojects.net analyzed several photographs, one of which was taken on March 2nd, 2022, a week after the invasion began. He deduced that mainly highly trained regular and special forces troops in Ukraine have been given priority fielding of the Maliuk bullpup in Ukraine. This photograph was shared by Caliber Obscure on Twitter and shows the weapon in the hands of the country's most elite. Kull have found that the American L3 Harris goggles that this soldier is wearing, for instance, likely go for around $40,000. And given Ukraine's limited numbers of NVGs and their small defense budget right now, we can safely assume that this weapon is usually prioritized for SF units because they're mostly seen in the hands of troops who have extremely expensive equipment on. So the specifications of the weapon are very interesting. The Maliuk is gas-operated, select-fired, bullpup rifle chambered in the 5x45 39mm or the 7.62x39mm and there's also a 5.56 version. It uses a long stroke gas piston system, has an effective firing range of 500 meters, weighs about 8.3 pounds and has a rate of fire of 660 rounds per minute. Can also feed from regular AK pattern magazines which is very useful for all of the Ukrainian soldiers that I've spoken to. It's very important that their weapons be compatible with AK style weapons because that's what they pick up often. This rifle looks like a futuristic bullpup at first glance, but when you take a closer look, the story starts to unfold. The concept here is that you can have a longer barrel while keeping the overall length of the rifle shorter, and the Malio did accomplish that simple goal. It has a 16 inch barrel with 27 inches overall in length. For comparison, an AK-74 has a length of 37 inches, so the Maliuk is shorter, more compact rifle that's easier to use indoors and in close quarters situations. So what does that mean for performance? Having a longer barrel means that the muzzle velocity is increased, which improves long range performance and accuracy by being less affected by external forces like wind. So on paper, you get a better rifle that's more maneuverable. As an example of what this means, let's compare the Maliuk to an M4 carbine. The M4 has a 14.5 inch barrel with an overall length of 33 inches. The Maliuk has a 16 inch barrel with an overall length of 27 inches. The M4 has a muzzle velocity of 2,950 feet per second, while the Maliuk is the equivalent of a 5.56 configuration, has a muzzle velocity of 3,080 feet per second. So you get an overall smaller package with a bigger punch and more accuracy at distance. In theory, the Maliuk performs better than the M4 in close quarters because of its small size and better at distance because of the longer barrel. But there are also some disadvantages. Namely, the triggers on bullpups are notorious for being bad. By moving the trigger group, trigger no longer has direct contact with the hammer, and instead there is a rod connecting the trigger to the hammer. This makes the trigger feel squishy. I've had this experience myself when I've shot bullpups. It feels weird. It feels like it, it's sticky. Instead of having a consistent take up and crisp break at the end like you have on the M4. On paper, this might lead to poor accuracy, but in practice as a service rifle, bullpup rifle triggers serve their purpose just fine because you're not doing refined shooting in combat necessarily. Bullpups are also well balanced and they're handy for firing and reloading in the standing positions. Ergonomics are more of a subjective area. We all have our own preferences, but bullpups tend to be hit or miss in this department. Safety selectors can be awkward. Height of bore can be weird, let's be honest, which can make it difficult to get a consistent cheek rest and some people don't like the mag changes. Although every one of these depends on the person and the rifle. 
and unfortunately we can't really get our hands on the Maliok to find out. But we can see some eccentric design choices here. The Maliok has three main components. The upper assembly, which is a polymer fixture with a Picatinny rail instead of the usual stamped dust cover. The lower receiver and barrel assembly and the trigger group, which is a polymer pistol grip and small forend with Picatinny rail. By looking at components disassembled, you can see that the original AK receiver is cut down slightly. And then the weirdest thing is the magazine retention device. Traditional AKs have a primitive but exceptionally effective rocker style magazine well with a paddle to release a mag. That's how you get the cool reload of rocking out the empty mag with a fresh mag before inserting. But instead of this battle tested tried and true system, they decided to put the mag release behind the trigger. No, really, this thing is inside the trigger well behind the trigger. I think they were forced to change the rocker design because the pistol grip interferes with inserting a magazine the typical AK way. But who knows, maybe putting your finger in the trigger well to release a magazine isn't the giant red flag of a safety issue that I think it is. In my research, I found that one complaint about the bullpup rifle conversion is that in comparison to rifles designed from the ground up used to be a bullpup, conversions tend to have poor management of the ejection pattern. This can be a big problem for left-handed shooters, and while certain bullpups were designed to prevent this problem, conversions often don't have that ability to do so. And this brings up something I like about the Maliuk. The top cover is polymer assembled with a specifically designed ejection port. Basically, the thought and care was placed into tackling one of the biggest issues for bullpup rifles, something that I'm very excited to see. IPI claims, and if they're true, there's a couple of other aspects of this rifle that I'm very interested in. So IPI, the designers of the Maliuk, make some bold claims about it and they're publicly available. And since we can't get our hands on one of these, we're gonna have to analyze photos and videos of its function and internal components to decipher what the truth really is. Uh, let's start with the first one. IPI claims that the Maliuk has less felt recoil than an equivalent AK variant. This one, I have a hard time taking with just face value. The Maliuk has the same operating mechanism and the same muzzle brake as a traditional AK-74, but let's see what IPI has to say about it. They claim that they've fine-tuned the gas system so the less gas is used to cycle the weapon, and now their claim is starting to make more sense at this point. To explain this further, let's break down what that would really mean. A semi-auto or select fire weapon works by siphoning off gas from the bullet as it travels through the barrel in order to cycle a weapon. There's a little gas port drilled into the barrel and this pushes the long stroke gas piston of the AK which extracts and ejects around. Then the buffer spring placed behind the bolt carrier group chambers a new one. Traditionally, the AK series of rifles has an excessive amount of gas pushing the gas piston towards the rear. The reason for the excess gas is to force the weapon to function regardless of any obstructions in the mechanism. It's kind of why the AK is known to be so reliable. In slow-mo footage of an AK firing, you can see this really intense action. This extra gas forces the bolt backwards and pummels the rear of the receiver. It's part of the reason why there's so much felt recoil on an AK. Now, this is just speculation, but if the Maliok did tone down that gas, it may have a small effect. Although I would guess that it's not as compelling as IPI is claiming for their own marketing and promotional use. The 545 already doesn't have very much recoil and videos of an equivalent AK-74 don't show a significant difference. There's another claim from IPI taken directly off of their website. They say that the Maliok uses a convection system to reduce heat and they say that it increases barrel life, reduces recoil and prevents hot gas from getting into your face. Now hold on just a minute here. Convection is essentially describing that hotter atoms have the tendency to rise and usually a convection system involves a liquid to cool a gas system and means that there's no moving parts. But there's no liquid cooling here. In the graphic from their website, they show air vents in the polymer furniture which allows air to escape. Uh, let's discuss this too. On traditional AK, the area where the gas port meets the gas piston is directly hidden behind wooden furniture where the shooter places their hand. Because of the way the long stroke gas piston system works, this area is where gas escapes and is no longer in the system. This means that the wooden furniture where you put your hand gets really hot from the release of gas. And because of this, AKs have the reputation of getting hot up front. This also means that very little gas gets blown down the rear of the rifle and into your face. So they're solving a problem that wasn't really there to begin with. The other part of this is that the addition of the pistol grip in front of the magazine well moves the placement of the furniture. This means that 
where you hold the rifle with your hand is now in front of the gas port, meaning that your hand should no longer get as hot while firing. Now, of course, this is all speculation, but my own personal prediction is that placing your hand in front of the gas port changes the balance of the weapon while also removing your grip from the hottest part of the weapon. So while I don't think that their so-called convection does what it really says it does, I do believe that a combination of the hand placement plus the fine-tuned gas pressure that we mentioned earlier adds to the weapon having an overall lighter feeling recoil. So to wrap this up, do you think the Maliuk is better than the Russian AK-12? Should we do a comparison video? Let us know in the comments. And if you found this video interesting or compelling, then I hope I earned your like and subscription. Thanks to our associate producer, Andrew Tucker, for helping research and write this episode. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy, and we'll see you on Task and Purpose again real soon. If you guys have another minute, then I think you'll really like this video about hypersonic missiles. Check it out if you get a chance.